So I was, I was really happy when I heard that Candice was speaking about the standardized education in the nature of mind. Because I, I can so deeply see that that's the great need of the world. And I, th I think I read my first book about the nature of mind when I was around 14. And I had my first client when I was like 22. So this is, has been a great passion for me my whole life. And of course, when I was growing up, looking at my parents, struggling, or when I was looking in the world and see all the, the fighting that was going on everywhere, it was just very natural for me to ask, what is the nature of this? What is really going on in the world? And how can I be of benefit? How can I help? But at that point in my life, I wasn't aware of that the urge to help, of course, also was, was a very deep urge to find peace in my own mind, so to speak, to really be comfortable in my own skin. To not see myself as a, a constant self-improvement project. And isn't that what we many times are trained in? We are very early trained that you have to be self-sustained, you have to stick out, you have to be different in a way that you are achieving more, and other are. Because that's the way what we are competing with each other all the time, many of us. So with that kind of training, what happens? What happens on the outside? And what are, what are actually the results of that kind of training? I mean, we can, we can just be very simple. We can just ask ourselves a very obvious question. How are we doing? What is happening in the world? And for me, it was very obvious, and it still is very obvious, that the only solution is to find inside of ourselves this harmony. And what really brings harmony to us is that part of our mind that unites everyone. And that, of course, is open intelligence. <coughs> because when we focus on our data, we will always find things that we don't agree about. We will always find how we are different. But what really, really unites us is the nature of our mind. So that is how important these training really are to find this unity. And the simple practice that we are inviting you all to use here is the short moments. A short moment where you just relax this urge to be different, this urge to strive for something, and just check out with yourself, how am I when I'm doing that? What happens when I do that? And immediately I could see that when I'm not emphasizing what's going on, I could see that there was a difference. And as we said before, when I was always focusing on trying to change myself, trying to change my experience, I couldn't see that part of myself. And you start to see that everything that you were trying so hard to get rid of is actually the dynamic energy of open intelligence. <coughs> it's inseparable. So that is one of the fundamental aspects of this training. Education in how to see that everything that we are trying to get rid of is actually the way back home to open intelligence. And isn't that amazing? That everything that we have been trying so hardly to get rid of is actually the way back to, to self-love and to harmony. by just letting everything be as it is. <coughs> and it sounds like it's a very passive practice. But if you really look at the balanced view people, you will see people that are not sitting on the chair all the time. Mm -hmm. You will really see very active people. Just before I entered the balanced view training, I was working as a management consultant, working with management teams. It was really exciting to see that everyone were basically struggling with the same thing. How can we make people work together without constant fighting? And it was quite a good business, to be honest, because then the th only thing that I was really doing was to neutralize 
the state of the mind of, of people I was trying to help. Because I, the only strategy I really had at that point was to try to change the way people were fighting with each other, the way that people are, were treating themselves on the inside, so to speak. So when I came to the training, I just saw that if I just continue with the short moments and taking the support that I'm going to speak about a little bit later here, I just started to see that this is really the solution for everything that I was looking for. So it started with myself. It started with finding this deep peace in myself when you let everything be as it is. And the simple question that you can ask yourself, how can you give anything to someone else that you don't have yourself? So that was also one thing that I saw when I was working with people was that I was always perceiving other people in the exact way that I was perceiving myself. So if I saw myself as something that needs to change, if I saw myself as a renovation object, that would be the way that I was approaching other people. And how can it be in any other way? So when I heard that Candy said, the greatest gift that you can ever give anyone is to take a short moment. Because when you do that, you introduce yourself, first of all, for your true nature, and you find this self-love that is the basis of everything. And that is what the other person will recognize in you. And have you ever met a person that is totally okay with everything that goes on? The transmission power from someone that is totally comfortable in their own skin. How is that? Isn't that a very profound experience? <coughs> It's actually someone that introduces you, maybe for the first time, to your true nature as open intelligence. So what we have in Balance to You that is really, really important, because we are so many of us are so trained in being self-sustained, I have to, or a sign of being an accomplished person and to be able to do everything by themselves. But is that really true? Have you ever found someone that is saying that I'm totally self-sustained, I don't need anyone? Actually, it is quite the contrary. I can see that every person that I have met that really have big, big deep self-love has had a support system, someone guiding them in that experience. So that's why we have the four mind states in, in the Balance two training. And the four mainstays, first of all, is the support system. Or, or <coughs> not the support system, the short moments, practice of short moments. When you just relax body and mind in, sh mind in short moments, whenever you remember to do so. And if that isn't enough, we can always tap into the media. We have a fantastic media website where we have all the talks. You can download books. We have all the texts. There is a big variety of options which are all aimed to just for you to have the recognition of open intelligence. It's just a reminder to read the text over and over again. And then we have the trainer. And the trainer is a very powerful person in your life because that person has the actual experience of having access to open intelligence in all data. It's just a wonderful to have that kind of connection with someone that always supports you back to what's your true nature over and over again. And then we have the community. Everyone sitting here, just reminding ourselves about who we really are and how we can tap into this natural state over and over again. So if we look at the concept of an ego identity <coughs> or, an, or an ego, we can just have a, a quick look into the nature of data. If you look at the nature of data, where is it coming from? And where is it now? And where is it going? Can you really say that, this is, that it is something solid? Or is it just yet like the breeze? We don't know where it's coming from. And we don't know where it goes. And what does that say about your identity that we're always trying to change so much? What I saw with this training that was that the, the identity that I was so occupied to trying to change, 
how often do you think about your identity? So I'm not saying that we don't have an identity. I'm just saying maybe it's not that solid that you think it's our. So what happens when you don't put all your focus in trying to change it? It changes all the time. So why put your effort into something that it changes itself all the time anyway? It's better to focus, in, focus on open intelligence because when you do that, you go beyond the identity. You see this unity that we are speaking about. You see the unity that always is, you always have <coughs> access to this unity in whatever you're doing in life. If you are active if, or if you are sitting in the living room, it doesn't matter. You always have access to it. You can always use the short moments to bring wisdom into every situation in your life. Whether you are active or no active, whether you are working as a lawyer, it doesn't matter. What always matters is how to, bring, how to bring wisdom into the situation, how to have access to that about us that really has a balanced view, a broad perspective of what's going on when we don't emphasize data. So when we are using our mind in that way, we just inform ourselves in every situation in our life about how to act. And I find that more and more for myself that the greatest desire that we all have is to be of benefit. And it just comes very naturally. When I'm comparing my life today with the life I had before, because I was so caught up in trying to change all the thoughts and emotions that I had, I was very self-focused. I was constant, constantly striving with finding peace in my life. So there wasn't very much energy left to anything else. And isn't that many times how we are living our life? But when my own case is resolved, so to speak, and you are home in open intelligence, very naturally, you become more active. And if open intelligence is, and, and perfect love is the same thing, we all know how it feels when we are deeply in love with someone or something. It's just very natural to share it. So the urge to be of benefit just comes very naturally. We don't have to strive for it. It's always there. <coughs> 